This must be the place. Professor Oubier's house. Looks pretty creepy. I'd been away from Paris and hadn't seen Nico for nearly six months. I wanted to celebrate our reunion, but she had other plans. An appointment with an archaeologist. Something to do with a Mayan stone she came across while researching the story. The guy who answered the door didn't look much like an archaeologist to me. I had a bad feeling about this. I glanced over the books, vaguely hoping to find a copy of How to Deal with Poisonous Spiders While Tied to a Chair. No such luck. But I noticed one corner of the bookcase was supported by a loose block of wood. Maybe I'd been a little heavy-handed, but it was a question of survival. Of course, I was still tied to a chair in a burning house with no means of escape. In the drawer was a small decorated pot. Inside, I found a bottle of tequila. Normally, I didn't drink strong spirits, but today was far from normal. Ew. Disgusting. Not only did the tequila burn like hell, I just managed to stop myself from swallowing the worm. There was something short, fleshy, and gross on the carpet. It was the worm from the bottle of tequila. number containing a lipstick, a handwritten note, and a pair of nylon panties with a large love heart emblazoned across the front. It occurred to me that Nico's tastes must have really changed while I was away. Well, they could be useful.
That dart was sharper than a mosquito's business end. But this didn't deter me from getting it anyway. As I released the lock, something blew the doors open. That cylinder was hot. I couldn't pick it up with my bare hands. It was a pair of red, lace-trimmed panties decorated with a large black satin heart. The panties I'd found in Nico's bag were just what I needed to wrap around the hot cylinder. The cylinder gave out a faint hiss as the valve opened. Huh? Now I had one primed up and ready to use extinguisher. I couldn't think of... I wasn't going to burn myself on that red-hot doorknob, and it wasn't the time for subtlety. I'd found a piece of newspaper folded in two. It referred to a forthcoming eclipse of the sun. Unfortunately, it wouldn't be visible from Europe. The best place to view the eclipse would be Mexico. It was the newspaper clipping referring to the imminent eclipse. Wrapped inside it was another small piece of paper. It was a bank statement for UBA's account from an automatic telling machine. The last five withdrawals were for large amounts and all made in Marseille. It was UBA's bank It was the... The phone was no use apart from... It was the newspaper clipping. It was Ubi. It was Ubi. I guess I had no business reading the note, but I figured it might give me a clue to what Nico was involved in. It was from Andre Labano, the history student Nico had known at college. The letter was sentimental mush and revealed that the exotic lingerie, as he called it, was a gift from him. It gave his telephone number. Labano figured himself as a rival for Nico's affections, but I couldn't believe that that creep was in the running. Much as I disliked him, Labano might be my only hope of finding Nico.
Hi, Andre. Who is this? It's George Stobart, Nico's boyfriend. Don't you mean ex-boyfriend? Look, I didn't call you just to pick a fight. I need to talk to you about Nico. Can't you accept she's just not interested in you? Listen, Andre, we need to talk. Nico's life depends on it. Okay. You remember the cafe at Montfaucon? Sure. Andre? You'd better show, you creep. I felt an irrational urge to wipe my ear. The pot contained a key. I unlocked the door. I wasn't looking forward to meeting Labano again, but he was my only link with Nico. There was no sign of Labano when I got to the cafe. I decided to order a coffee and wait for him. I couldn't snatch the man's flask while he was looking. The man was still looking. Oh, garçon? He ignored me. I'm sure it was deliberate. Pardon me, but don't I know you? Huh? You were here the, the day I found the catacombs. I was? Ah, yes. I remember you. Yeah. Are you still in the police force? No, not anymore. I'm a man of leisure. And what brings you back to Paris? My girlfriend. Ah. What it is to be young and in love. Can you share a bottle of wine with me? Hey, listen, I'd love to, but I need to keep a clear head. So my company isn't good enough for you. Why did you leave the police? I was forced to retire. A golden handshake. Only in my case, it was more copper than gold. How come? I was made a scapegoat to cover up the department's inefficiencies. Have you ever heard of a Professor Oubier? No, monsieur. I don't recall the name. Well, apparently he's an expert on Mayan art and history. A little out of my field of experience, monsieur. If he'd been a serial killer or a sodomite, I might have been able to help. The man was still... What's that you're drinking? It's wine. What do you make of this dart? Uh, I remember a case where the victim was killed with just such a device. Poison acted in seconds, causing his body to swell up like an inflatable life raft. What do you make of this news cutting? Orphanage supplied fast food chain? No, it's the article above that. Oh! Total eclipse of the sun. Well, oh, that's very dull in comparison. I don't know anything about eclipses. Tell me what you make of this note. From my years of experience, I gained a pretty good insight into handwriting. I'd say that note was written by a compulsive, obsessive type with an Oedipus complex. Hey, you got just about everything apart from the ponytail.
Hey, you. Qua, I'd like a cup of coffee if you don't mind. When I finish serving this gentleman. Un café. Thanks. What does that guy keep pouring out of his flask? Absinthe. Absinthe? Well, I thought that was highly dangerous and outlawed in France. It is. Don't look at me, I didn't sell it to him. Do you know a guy called André Lobino? Oui, I know him. What of it? I'm supposed to meet him here. Did I miss him? No, I have not seen him today. Have you heard of Professor Oubier? Oui. He married that actress, the little Dachshund. They used to come here. The nutty professor and the movie star. If Oubier's wife was a movie star, how come I never heard of her? She was big in France. The world doesn't stop at Hollywood. Her stage name was Carol Climax. She died in suspicious circumstances. How did Oubier's wife die? I heard he shot her. And got away with it? He had a good lawyer and a watertight alibi. Why would an eminent public figure like Oubier risk everything for murder? He wouldn't be the first, would he? Besides, people like him always get off. Do you know that man over there? I should think so. He's a regular customer. Look at this. A poison dart. Now we, oui. sure. It's the real thing. Knocked my girlfriend out cold in a matter of seconds. Romantic. Sounds like a real close relationship you have going. That's all. Thank you. Well, well, this is a surprise, surely. I wouldn't normally call you. But Nico's in trouble, Andre. Deep trouble. You have to help me find her. What? What have you dragged her into this time? It was you that recommended Professor Oubier as an expert on Mayan art. Now his butler has kidnapped her. And he tried to kill me. Every time she gets involved with you, there is trouble. Walking out on her was the best thing you could do. My father was dying, damn it. I had no choice. Well, she soon recovered once she went back to her old friends. Drop it, Andre. Right now, Nico's in danger, and we have to work together. So, how can I help? Nico needed to speak to Ubier about a stone. Oh, you mean this stone? So that's what all the trouble's about. Precisely. Nicole told me to guard it with my life. Well, it's worth more than that, surely. Oh, very funny. What's funny is that your life really is on the line. What are you talking about? The stone is a Mayan artifact, dummy. And the guy who kidnapped Nico was from Central America. It was the stone they were after. Oh, my God. You mean I could be in danger, too? What do you suppose the carving on the stone means? I don't know. I haven't shown it to anyone. Why don't you just give it to me? I don't want your death on my conscience, Georges. Where did Nico get the stone? It was sent to her. From where? Who? I'm not sure I should tell you. Oh, you should. It was something to do with smuggling. Why didn't Nico take the stone to Ubier? I don't know. Perhaps she suspected something like this would happen. If she's been hurt, Andre, I'll break every bone in your body. No, that's typical of you. Do you think I don't care what happens to Nicole? It occurred to me that slugs don't have bones to break, but I kept that thought to myself. Tell me about your friend Oubier. He's more of a professional acquaintance than a friend. I see. So you don't really know him at all? No, I don't. Does Ubier employ a guy from Central America? Maybe. I don't know.
What do you think this is, Andre? I don't know. I'll give you a clue. It's got more backbone than you. You think you're amusing, don't you? What can you tell me about this pot? South or Central American, I'd say. I have a friend who'd be able to tell you more. Where can I find this guy? He owns a gallery on the left bank, the Glees Gallery. Take a look at this, Andre. It's a bank statement? Yeah, Professor Oubier's account. Five large cash withdrawals in the space of three days, all from an automatic teller in Marseille. Suspicious, isn't it? You're even more crazy than you were before. See you later. Goodbye, Georgie. I've had enough of your games, Kalal. Tell me what you've done with my stone. I thought your business was simply smuggling cocaine, Karzak. Why are you so interested in that stone? Either you tell me what I want to know, or Pablo here will make you talk. Okay. Well, I figured someone at the university would be able to help. So I had a word with one of my girlfriends, and she told me her boyfriend was a lecturer. I... I sent the stone to the Department of Ethnology. You know, I figured it was South American, so... You're not buying this, are you? That's enough! I don't have time to listen to your mindless prattle. We'll leave you to think it over. Come the morning, you'll be ready to talk. Ever heard of Carol Climax, the movie star? Yes, but I don't care for the kind of movie she's made. It's much like that which has caused the moral decline of the Western world. Do you miss being a gendarme? <sighs> yes, of course I do. When I wore that uniform, I commanded the respect. Not anymore. I grabbed the flask and was struck by a powerful smell of absinthe, a highly potent and illegal alcoholic drink. You need any... There was nothing I wanted to... Now I had another lead. I could either go back to Ubier's house or visit the Glees Gallery. I could either go back to Ubier's house or visit the Glees Gallery. The Glees Gallery had style and class, but very few customers. Are you Mr. Glees, the owner? Yes, sir. May I help you? You're English? These days, one prefers to think of oneself as European. Uh, sure. Whatever you say. And how precisely may one assist you, sir? What I really wanted to ask you about was a black stone. A black stone? 
Yeah, it's a Mayan artifact, about as big as my hand. No, sir, one doesn't get much cork for black stones. If it's Mayan artifacts you're interested in, I have some rather exquisite pots. Yeah, I noticed. I've already got one of those. Who's that guy over there? That's Mr. Lane, sir, the critic. I'm hoping he'll give the gallery a favorable write-up. One has to be so patient with these critics. Lure them in with the correct bait, watch for a bite, and play them like a fish. Well, he's certainly drinking like one. Have you heard of Professor Oubier? Of course. His name is synonymous with Mayan art. A number of these artifacts were supplied by Oubier himself. Do you believe the story that Oubier murdered his wife? If it was true, who can blame him? She was an opportunist tramp. Well, that's what I heard. Have you seen any of Oubier's wife's films? Only one. Believe me, I was appalled, shocked, disgusted, and repulsed. Well, you sure got your money's worth. Last time I went to the movies, I wasn't even titillated. I suppose you have an import license for these relics? Of course. Well, that's not my problem, sir. The professor arranges all the shipping. We simply collect the items from the docks. Could you tell me which docks Professor Oubier uses to import the artifacts? Good God, no. I can't possibly reveal my commercial secrets. Do you get many Central American Indians in here? No, sir. This is Paris. Central America is several thousand kilometers southwest of here. Straight across the Atlantic Ocean and turn left. You can't miss it. Well, as it happens, I saw some Central American Indians this very morning. Tourists, sir. Paris is full of them at this time of year. I found this news story referring to a total eclipse of the sun. Really, sir? Well, well, fascinating. I'd like your opinion on this pot. Interesting. Would sir be interested in selling the article? That depends. How much would you give me for it? 300? Possible 325? I'll think about it. You're lame, the critic, aren't you? Correct. Can't you see I'm busy? Busy? Doing what? Appreciating the art. Or depreciating it. I have a reputation to uphold. I could tell this guy was going to be hard work. Have you heard of Professor Oubier? Yes, of course. I was at his house earlier. If you're going to drop names, you could at least name one worth dropping. I thought Oubier was a well-respected man. Why, his last book was nothing but pseudo-intellectual claptrap. The demented ramblings of a drug-dependent has-been. What's that you're drinking? I'm not sure, but I have a suspicion it might be urine. Glees can't expect a favorable criticism of his gallery when he serves this muck. Would you give me your opinion on this pot, sir? Very rapouche. Rapouche? Hideous. What the hell do you think you're doing? You smashed my pot! Certainly, it was not only worthless, it was ugly and offensive. To you, maybe. Believe me, I was doing you a favor. I wasn't going to waste any more breath talking to that pompous blimp. Maybe I could turn the situation to my advantage, and at the same time, get my revenge. Thank you.
I splashed a little absinthe into the glass and hoped he wouldn't notice the change of color. Did you put something in my drink? Uh, yeah, I did. Well, what do you think? Well, it's certainly an improvement of Iglesias' wine. In fact, I could grow to like it. Allow me. There was nothing in the case but styrofoam packing, but pasted on the side was the remains of a label. It was a sturdy... The packing case... It was a sturdy pack... It was the it was the newspaper it was ubi are insured, but not the shelving. You've no idea how much that cost me. Go away. It was a stir. The packing case. It was the news. I didn't think Glees. Go away. The pot had smashed into the glass spheres. The packing case. The packing case. Underneath the logo of a flying bird were the words Condor Transglobal Mars. The rest of the label was missing. It was beginning to make sense. Ubier had organized Nico's abduction. Ubier withdrew money from Marseille. 
Ubié was connected with Trans Global, who shipped their goods from a warehouse in Marseille. That's how the torn Trans Global label had once read, Marseille, not Mars. It wasn't much of a lead, but it was all I had. I set off immediately to catch the evening train. It was almost dawn when I arrived in Marseille. I traced Condor Transglobal to a desolate dockside. 